When one conjures up images of Atlantic Canada, they see beautiful scenery, fishing villages and lobster. What the fly fisherman sees are some different opportunities. In Nova Scotia, there's Atlantic salmon, eastern brook trout, smallmouth bass to name a few. But today we're after American shad. Now some think of shad as a bait fish, but each spring as they migrate north up the eastern seaboard for their yearly spawn, the bigger, stronger ones make it as far north as Nova Scotia. Shad here average four to six pounds and have a fiendish attitude, which is perfect for the fly fisher. Shad are a saltwater fish that enter freshwater each spring to spawn. And today, Perry Monroe of Mountain Maple Lodge is coaching and guiding us to where the fish are at the Nictaw River, which empties into the Annapolis River in western Nova Scotia. American Shad in Nova Scotia, that's today on Sport Fishing on the Fly. <laughs> for sport fishing on the fly are Don Fresky and Grant Vines. Hey, welcome to Mountain Maple. Thank you. Uh, yeah, looking forward to the week. With you. you brought the weather. Uh, that is incredible. We, we've had nothing but rain all year. We neither, come here all day. It's going to leave some good rain. memories in Nova Scotia. Uh, some nice weather. As long as you stay, I hope your whole weather holds. We're going to try American Shad tomorrow. Uh, American Shad, that's the little bait fish. <laughs> well, you think. <laughs> Down south, they say the same thing. But what we have here is the American Shad. It's a, a fish that lives in salt water, it comes up to fresh water to spawn and they're a saltwater fish in our stream, so it's an unusually big fish for our stream. How big? Well, they run four to six, seven pounds, but I would suggest we'll probably get a four or five pound, the odd fish six. And a good fight. A great fight. Saltwater fish always fight well. They, some people compare them to little tarpon. They Ooh. don't jump as well as tarpon, but <laughs> they right. fight very strong. Good. And if we're lucky enough, and I think we'll do a shad thing tomorrow or the next day, and when the weather holds, we'll do some smallmouth bass. They're a great fish. They, they take to the air as soon as they feel the hook, they're in the air. Uh, so we'll hopefully we get some good shots for the viewers of uh, fish jumping. Yep. And then after we're done that, we'll try, hopefully, do some float tubing for brook trout. Yeah. Yep. But we're trying to put an awful lot in our plate, but yep. I know you're a good fisherman. <laughs> and, and hey, you came to the right place, so... Uh, yeah, there's lots of looking lots of, forward lots to of great really places to fish here. To yeah. You got the nice lodge. I yeah. know there's lots of antiques in there. I'm looking forward to taking oh, a look at some of that yeah, stuff. Yeah, lots too. of stuff to read. But hey, the best part of coming to Nova Scotia is lobster, right? Ah, uh, we have lobster. <laughs> Can't come to Nova Scotia and not have lobster. So let's go <laughs> well, down let's and get all food. unpacked and get settled. Yep. An ideal setup for shad fishing is a 10-foot 5-weight rod. This setup allows for easy roll casting and is powerful enough to handle these fish. The way these fish sit, the females sit below the males. I got full sink line on and I put a little split shot on because I wasn't getting down to them, but I, I need to put a little bigger split shot on to get down to where the females are because the females are bigger. How is he? Nice sized fish? Uh, I think about the same size the last one, maybe a touch bigger. Hard to say. I haven't seen it. I haven't seen it really yet. They look neat because right the they color seem of to the be water. sitting in the straight through water, like not the bubbly water. Yeah. This one's a little bit bigger. Oh, there we go. Oh, nice job. This is a little bit bigger. Oh yeah. Oh man. Let me slide down here. This guy's. I think getting ready to get landed. This water, this bottom is really mucky. A little bit bigger than the last one. Looked right in the snoot, same as the place as the last one. Yeah, this is probably uh, 
four pounder. Now these shads are the, they're a member of the herring family. They're actually the biggest member of the herring family. The way you can tell this is a shad, not a herring, if you get a smaller one, is there's no teeth. The shad have no teeth. So they, they just feed on plankton in the water. They're not a carnivore. And they're in here spawning, in this river spawning. And what they're doing right now is they're trying to protect, protect themselves. Oh, there he goes. Got off the hook. There's a look at it. That's a nice size fish. Hey, just a beauty. He's ready to go too. So I'm gonna let this guy go. Whoa. Nice release. Good powerful fish for a four weight line, four weight rod. It's just about right. Now they've messed up the water here too. It's gonna take a minute for it to clear, so I think I'll just take a break. So what setup do you have on right now? I got a full sinking line on, type yeah. three full sink line. I got about four or five feet of fluorocarbon leader. And then I got a micro shot about a foot and a half up. Oh, just to really get it down. To get it right down, yeah. And I'm the same, I have, I've got a sink tip on, and I've got uh, on top of my sink tip, right on the end of that, I've got a, even a real fast sinking leader. And then a small stretch of fluorocarbon with, my, with the fly. And I think the key is to get right on the bottom with these shad. Yep. They sit on the bottom, you can bounce the fly across, you get a lot of hits because they take so easy. Oh. They just nibble at you, it. You know what it's like? It's like when you grab your shirt and just pull your shirt a little bit. That's what it takes like, it's it about is. that soft. And you really have to set it right away. So you gotta be ready to pull the trigger. So first one I got was on the drift, second one was on the strip. Was it? Yeah. There. Oh. Yeah, they're hitting it on the strip, right on the bottom. Just as soon as you start to strip it. Yeah. So this oh. is just like, uh, a little bit like bugger fishing. I've got it measured out where I think the fish are sitting right now. I just wait for it to go across. Yeah. And just stay there. Nothing, then I let another foot of line out and then go for it there. And they're just, they seem to be just on the other side of the current. Sitting just on the edge of the outside seam from where we're at. Yeah, I think so. They go from the slack water to the fast water right in that seam. Well, the shad, they come up after five years, they come up and spawn. These actually are spawners. They're not spawning yet. They're going to be spawning in about another two weeks time from now. So they just come into the river. So they do come up here to spawn. And they lay their eggs. And the, and the eggs only take 12 to 15 days to hatch. And they're just free flowing because there's no gravel bars or anything. Right. So the eggs just free flow down the river. They hatch in about September. Once they get to be about two or three inches long, they go down and become feed for somebody else on their <laughs> way to the ocean. And then I guess the ones that survived the, the feeding frenzy in the ocean make it back up here to spawn again. Yeah. And they go five years. It's a five year cycle. And they go five years. It's a five year cycle. So what I did was I, I started up there. I worked my way down. I picked two off through there, work my way down to here. I thought this was the nicest run below us here, but I didn't get anything, so I've just gone back up and started to work my way down again. Gee, these are powerful fish, oh, especially with a light tackle like this. <laughs> Not ready yet. Dawn's on too. Let's see if this guy's ready here. You can't see down. There's so much tannic acid here. You can't see down. Let's see what uh, what's down there. I don't want to walk in right here. Just upside down. Usually works with trout. No teeth. There we go. There's a good look at one. He's just going to flop away on me again. There, but there's a good look at. What they look like. Oh, well, that's a nice one, Grant. Off he goes. No push. That was okay. Nice fish. No uh, no teeth, these guys. But they got a little no bone teeth. right along their belly. So you have to be careful how you handle them with their belly. Like a shark, you can only push one way, come back the other way. Good fighters, though. Really nice yeah. fighters. Boy, oh, hey, just right, stand yeah. up on the point and I look down, and you know, the water's really dark. Yep. But, dude, dude, they're doing a little circle dance. It's like there's about six of them. Oh yeah? All about this size and they're, see them once, then you wait about five seconds, see them circle, and they just follow the same circle. So what do I do? I dapped. <laughs> I dipped my line in, I brought it like this, guy came up behind it, whoop, and took it. it. Oh, right on. 
<laughs> hey, okay. Bob told us on the way here that that was going to happen, that they start to circle around and it, about a yeah. week before they start to spawn, right? Was that funny? <laughs> I, just, I saw him, I couldn't believe it. And this guy circled and I put it in front of his nose and he, he gobbled it, took it. The fish, I mean, these that's, are... That's a nice fish. Oh, yeah. Gee, you know, up at the falls there earlier, I had a real big one on, though. Yeah. One of the, one of the bigger ones, I think I sure. might have to put on a, a bigger micro shot than I have on right now. But this is, this is definitely a nicer fish. I'll just try to unhook them. You got a good uh, picture of the fish earlier. They're real flat. I'll just try to unhook them. Ah, oh, here. We'll bring them up. They are a very pretty fish. Turn really flat pretty. There. Turn Look at how flat they are. They're just like a really bucket. flat, really bony bottoms, but they, they're a real special fish. Really nice. They almost look like a baby tarpon. Right. Call real nice colors. And uh, an American and they, shad. American shad, and they fight great. Great fighting fish. There he goes. Right on. And there's a whole bunch in here. There are. <laughs> couple of years we've had the opportunity to look at a lot of what we think are new technologies but Perry you got a lot of great stuff here we find out that a lot of this stuff is really cool technology. It's all reborn again you're yeah. right yeah. You got some really neat things here this winder for instance. Oh yeah this is a lime winder they used to have to use it because they use silk lines right and they're very sticky and they would get wet so you hold the one would wind them off like that and dry them at night in the morning they turn them over and wind them back on so that the lines would be dry every day. Right. Now they're using it, same technology for loading the reels. So they get the back and the line and everything the same level. In other words, reverse the process. Reverse it so you can fill your line up That's with right. as much backing so as you can get. What's old, <laughs> all new again. It's now new again. What year is that from? That's in the 1800s. 1800s, wow. Yeah. Yeah. You got a lot of neat reels here too. The reels are interesting. This one, this one here is from the 1890s. And the interesting thing is it little clicker in it. Work, little clicker, you know, yep. Little drag in it. And they also balanced the handles, you know, so that they had the opposite, so it wouldn't wobble when a fish ran with it. Yep. So it's nothing very, very new. Yep. It, it does a whole. Now, lightning reels, lightening them up. This is from the 1800s. It's a, it's a Alcock aerial. Right. But look how they've lightened this reel. Yeah, everywhere they could, they've taken the metal yeah, out of it. They've taken they? the metal out of it everywhere they could. And uh, got the clicker, the drag. It works as compared to this reel, which is a hardy, huh. an old hardy, which is half the size lifted. Yeah. <laughs> Amazing, isn't it? <laughs> half the size yeah. and twice the but weight. But you see all kinds of techno people saying, well, we'll build a reel with the. Oh, yeah, that's, the, that's yeah, the big thing now. That's the big thing now. Get a light 1890s. Reel. Yeah. yeah. You got another one back here too. Well, it's Doesn't the same. Look. That's a Fluger, a, a Fluger brass reel. That brass. Yeah, it's brass. It's Fluger and it has the opposites. Yep. Right. Again, that's cut light. all out. Yeah. Cut. It's as light as a feather. Yeah. The reel arbor in there is all. You know, open. I feel like we could be doing this a hundred years ago. The new technology oh, show right. hundred years ago. Yeah. <laughs> well, that's true. I mean, yeah. a lot of things are like like that. You got some neat flies up here too. Yeah. Well. These ones up here are the ones from the 1890s, 1880s. They had gut eyes instead of the uh, hook. Yeah, the loop. steel. Yeah. steel eyes. That wasn't invented yet. That came in the uh, 1920s, like, and I have those ones up there, that one, uh, that vintage. These ones here, they're trout flies with the gut eyes. They don't have any you know, eyes on them. to make loops. You had to connect the flies by loops. And those were all gut eyes. had to be wet soaked before you used them. And speaking of leaders, I mean, like a micrometer, this is an old hardy micrometer and an old Orvis uh, cat gut. Uh, right, but the cat gut wasn't yeah, tapered itself, was wasn't, it? No, I couldn't taper it. So they, they built compound leaders using these lime micrometers, which are very, very accurate. You just drop your leader in, drop it down, and the, and the thousand comes up there. And you look at some of these old leader materials, Understand this is cat gut and it is right. really old. 
you can see the, the knots that so make up the compound taper. So even the anglers in the 1800s knew the value of transfer of energy down to the very leader all right. the way to the fly. Yep. That's not new. <laughs> no, not new. <laughs> These people were pretty smart at what they did. Oh, you just got some, some great needle stuff. Where'd you come up with all this stuff? Uh, well, Nova Scotia was where it kind of started in North America. Mm -hmm. uh, the British Army officers came here as land grants due to their great victories in war. Right. So they came here, and so it started here. So a lot of this stuff is still around people's attics. Yard sales, an incredible amount. And that old Fluger reel over there, it came from a yard sale last week. It came in the box, <laughs> in the bag, <laughs> and the reel. I mean, so it's still all around. I think if anybody in their areas looked around, they'd find some of this old stuff. And it's fascinating once you start. Oh, it is. This is I'm, I'm really enjoying myself. And thanks for taking the time oh, to not show a problem, everybody not a lot a of the stuff. We got no. a lot more stuff here. Yep. <laughs> a lot of fun. Old technology that we're trying to make new again. Yeah. There's another way that you can cast to get the fly down. Just strip this in. Don calls it spaghetti casting because it looks like a whole bunch of spaghetti. You cast out. You don't cast quite all your line out. You take what's left over and flick it out. Allows everything to get right down. Starts to tighten up. The fly should be a lot lower this time. You know if you're too low because you'll be hitting the bottom. And the reason I went to the point three is because I haven't been snagging up on the bottom. Now what happened is I was dragging it through where those uh, fish were holding. There's about, gee, we saw six to ten circling all the time up there. But when the whole pack came through, there had to be 20 or 30 of them, maybe even more. Brought this fly through there and I think this guy turned on it and I false hooked him. That's why he's fighting so good. Right on the top. I'll get down here. Very pretty fish. And they're really thin. They're real thin fish. You can almost see. You got to really be careful with the bottom. They have a real bony bottom. They can cut your hands like a razor blade. So you got to really be careful. Oh, it's not been bad. That not a bad fish though. Get him revived. He had a long little trek down. There he goes. Hi, and welcome to On The Bench. Today we're going to tie up a shad fly. We've been using shad fly darts today, and we've also been using the standard shad fly, which we're going to tie up. Make sure you have this list of ingredients before you start. A 0.75 gram heavy silver lead or gold double eyes for the eyes, bright red or green chenille for the body, white calf tail for the tail, and some red calf tail for the beard. I'm starting the fly off on a size 10 2x long hook with some heavy black mono thread. We're going to start the fly off by taking our heavy silver double eyes and tying in the eyes for the hook. When you're wrapping the eyes, make sure you form the figure eights all around the, the eyes and make sure you build up a lot of thread around there just so they stay nice and even and on top of the hook. Now I've taken a small clipping of white calf tail and we're going to tie that in as a tail and we want it as long as the hook shank to stick out from the end of the hook. We'll now take some red chenille and tie it in and then we'll slowly wrap it towards the eyes of the hook to form the body. When you're tying in the body make sure that you wrap the chenille around the eyes of the hook also to cover up the tops and bottom part of the eyes. Now for the last step in the fly. Again, I've taken a small little snippet of the red calf tail and we're gonna tie it right up to the head end of the hook to form the beard. And after you've tied in the red calf tail, make sure you form a nice big black head on the fly just to fill in that whole upper section. The shad fly really is a funny little fly. You gotta remember though that shad are plankton feeders and they're only gonna take this fly out of aggression. So the big key to this fly is make sure you have the lead weight, get it down deep in the shad's territory 
and they'll take it. Give it a try and good luck. The best time to fish for shad in Nova Scotia is from mid-May right through to mid-June. Contact Perry Monroe at Mountain Maple Lodge to arrange your adventure. Looks like you just hooked one up. Yeah, I got a nice one, huh? Oh, what a great fish. Everybody's been catching them today. Yeah, that's a nice little hole, too. That's just like the one we came from. They yep. seemed to all stack up in the, in the nice calm part. I can see all the, the bush and the structure all through there in between the two currents. Perfect for fly fishing there. too, because there's nothing to hook your fly on behind wow. you. Excellent, excellent location. Yeah, really good nice. cast. Oh, there he is. Oh yeah. Oh, he popped it. That's not a bad fish. Oh yeah, that's a big one. Oh, oh, is he going? Oh. Boy, just ever so small a take and you just got to jab him. Another nice fish. Try to lift him up here. Let's see if folks can see him. Get this fly out here. The only thing we don't use is barbless hooks because they're so tough to catch as it is. Oh yeah, there's a nice, nice shad. Nice size. That's a little better fish. Oh, you got to watch the bottom. See the see the row of spines. They are very bony fish, and they'll cut your fingers real easily. So you got to be really careful with them. Why? That guy didn't need any reviving either. Off he goes. Here we go. There you go. Right on. Fish on. Excellent. You know what? I think this guy tracked with it because I could feel him. He nibbled it, nibbled it, nibbled it. And he finally took a bigger nibble, so I set. He's just barely nibbling it over there. Only a powerful fish. This is as big as I thought. Oh. I have one other big one similar to this. Yeah, 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 yeah. Just barely hooked in there. Just barely hooked. Look at that, look how fat that thing is. Huh? That's a nice one. Definitely nice fish. What a great day of fishing. Chad Fish, Nova Scotia. Oh, it was incredible. Perry Monroe, the Mountain Maple Lodge, he can get you to where the fish are. And you have a great day like we had today. Was it ever. A lot of fun. Those things, they peel you off, they fight well. We had the lighter equipment, four and five weight rods, which is ideal for this kind of thing. Really similar to steelhead fishing, except there's a lot more fish and uh, easier to catch, for sure. I did a lot, I enjoyed this a lot more than I did steelheading, I have to admit. Something that everybody should try, American Shad. When you come to Nova Scotia though, make sure you take care. And conserve waters, only take what you need. Yeah, we're gonna get fishery just like this. Excellent. See you next time. On sport fishing, on the fly. A lot of fun trying something different. Oh, totally new, you know, wet line, everything else. It looked really good. Hmm, a nice one. All about the same size. We haven't got any of the real big ones, but uh, oh, looks like you got to try to turn their head to get them in here. There we go. And hook them. There he goes. Boy, oh boy. Yeah, there he is. Nice shad. <sighs> nice colors. Oh, there he goes. Didn't want to wait. I wasn't going to hold him. Boy. What a day.